Hi, I'm Dirk Daner, president and co-founder of this Tama Finland Foundation, which is coming up on its 40th anniversary next year. And uh, in the last decade or so, we have been having artists in residence. And so uh, today, uh, we're doing an exit interview with uh, Theo Buha. Right? Right. Okay. And uh, Theo is from uh, Finland, Helsinki, and uh, Helsinki, Finland. And uh, he, uh, you know, he sort of is our master class kind of artist in residence in that he is uh, well deep into his career as a photographer. And, uh, and he, uh, he felt there was something he could probably learn or experience or have access to by coming and doing a residency. What was that? Well, yeah, a lot of things. Obviously, generally, I I like to do these kind of residencies. And I've been, since I moved out of London, I kind of thought that instead of staying in one place, I want to explore cities that I haven't been to. And I hadn't been here before, to LA. And obviously, the vast archives you have at the house have been really super interesting to study. And I didn't quite realize how much stuff you have here. I kind of thought that you might only have Tom's work, but you have such a big collection of erot erotic arts from a really long time. So is this probably the, the biggest in the world? Is there another? An you one? know, sometimes uh, we have sort of in insinuated that but since we don't have an accurate number of uh, catalog images yet, uh, we uh, we just say we're one of the bigger ones. Yeah. Yeah. I mean, it's been amazing, especially with uh, as a photographer seeing like contact sheets from other photographers how they um, selected the works and gone through the process uh -huh. and the, uh, the archives. You have a lot of that. So that's all obviously a big inspiration to see that old school uh, photography. Like uh, Bruce Valet or, or oh, yeah. AMG or, or uh, Al Urban. Exactly. And obviously there were names that I was familiar with, but I've all already encountered people that I hadn't heard of. So that's one thing. That's because I love photography books. So that's been one of the really great things to have with all the books. I certainly piled them on you, didn't I? Yeah, you did. Like the first week you just piled like probably not hundreds of books, but tens of books. Yes. And I was so happy to go through them and explore them, yeah. So, um, you came here and uh, uh, three months has passed. <laughs> I know, it's, it's, yeah. And it, uh, it took you a little bit of time to sort of orientate, figure out, well, I need to sort of get a read on, on uh, the house and the access to materials. Yeah. And uh, and you didn't really know uh, anyone here. That's true. I mean, I basically did not know anybody. I hadn't met anybody who lived here coming to LA. Alison I kind of knew off, but I'd never met her. Mm -hmm. um, and I'm so happy that I know so many people now. I've met so many friends and it's like, it's been quite a hectic I actually said to somebody that I probably met during these three months, I've met more people than I've met during the past three years in Finland. Mm -hmm. So it's been amazing. It's been interesting watching you uh, bring them through the house, <laughs> as it were. <laughs> yeah. And, uh, and in a good way, in that uh, you have selected uh, a broad range of, of uh, types of uh, males to photograph and uh, and you've had uh, access to uh, others who have introduced you but you've also probably got out of your uh, were you uncomfortable at all about approaching uh, people here no surprisingly not i suppose because it's um, a tomo finland house and the foundation so everybody kind of know knows that already so there's always that thing that as a, when a male photographer approaches a male, a male, then there's always that question like, what does he want from me? Because normally you would assume you would assume that the person would be straight because that's the majority of people. But when you meet people here at the events, of course, that's like so easy to 
talk to like-minded people. Yeah. So it, it, I'm never shy. I mean, I always approach people I work on the photograph, but here it's been, I haven't found it difficult at all. And everybody, everybody has been really sort of um, happy. Oh, I'm so glad, I'm so honored that you asked me to photograph. Um, well, it's great to hear that. So nobody said no, I think. I, mean, I can't think of anybody, uh -huh. more, more of the opposite. No, I don't think anybody said no. Well, I do another project as well, which is really interesting, like, which is completely out of this uh, scene. It's like this um, work, another book uh, about junior bodybuilders, and they, they're not coming, they're just completely different scene. They're like 19 year old guys that just probably don't, haven't even heard of Tom Finland or that doesn't really know about the gay scene or anything like that. So I did one shoot with one guy in, who traveled from San Diego. And then I was planning to go there to shoot his friend, but he was doing exams, so I couldn't do it. So, uh, in exploring LA, uh, what what has happened there as far as you? Because uh, you've been doing shoots outside. Yes. Yeah. Um, obviously, when I when I had when I arrived, I kind of because I do many things. I do like with my work I do short films and performance and always try to sort of do new new stuff try new medias as well new um, ways of working and I kind of when I arrived here I had like a list of what could I do and I had nine options and one of them was like a short film um, and then I'm actually I'm not sure you're not sorry your question but I'm, I'm getting there yeah. so what I mean that then I decided okay the time is running out fast like a month has month has already passed had already passed and I hadn't even taken my camera out of my bag and then I decided okay I'm here what what should I make use of and then I thought yes I'm gonna use the, the scenery and the light that's available here Unfortunately, it wasn't always available here because it was, it's been raining right. most of the time. But I thought, like, because I started writing a new short film, and then I realized it's not really, it doesn't really have to. The story was like that; it wouldn't really need to take place in LA. So I thought, okay, I mean, I'm gonna write it here, and I've kind of halfway through it. But I kind of thought that it doesn't need to happen. I don't need to film it here at least at this time. So I'd rather make use of the light and the models that I had to get and do just straightforward photography. Does it have a working title? Yes, a giant. Yes. Sort of appropriate, right? Yes. Yeah, so it's uh, yeah, yes. If I, I just didn't, I've kind of learned because um, I, I've done. I'm just like a a filmmaker still like learning the craft so the, the I showed here at the event like three of my short films and I think w the previously the way I worked is like a putting a puzzle together so I don't necessarily I haven't had the script all done when I started shooting and that's why sometimes it takes three or four years to um, finish it because I need to do additional shootings but then the latest one I did in Madrid a few years ago, that was the first one that I had everything ready. I had the script ready and I said, filmed it there and I edited it and I thought, okay, this is the way it should be. And where would that type of film be shown? That type of film? Yeah. Well, um, a film festivals, mm -hmm. galleries. Yeah. I mean, previously I kind of I haven't really submitted that much to film festivals except for the previous one, which would, did did quite well at the festivals. But then the the previous one had been like gallery films. But this new one, yeah, as well. I think they all similar kind of. Uh, there's a narrative, but they're experimental. So they're not really like I suppose they're not dialogue led. Right. So, so the museums would be a... Okay. Yeah, that, that's why I normally shot in the yeah. gallery and places like that. So, uh, in planning and executing your uh, excerpt uh, showing, mm -hmm. uh, it was multi-media uh, in that you had short films and you had uh, an exhibition of works by artists that you had shot here. Yes. 
Yeah, I kind of thinking. I was thinking when you have an event, it's. I always try to make it entertaining. I'm thinking if people bother coming to an event, it's nice if there's something to look. I mean, something to look at, but as much as possible to look at. So that's why I decided to include those short films, although I didn't make them here. And I wasn't planning to show them actually. I thought, okay, I'm not gonna. I'm, I'm like, I'm not like really a filmmaker. I'm just starting out, and I'm in Los Angeles, and I'm in Hollywood, and I can't show these films here. Films here because everybody's gonna laugh at them. <laughs> so, anyway, no, no, yeah, I know that's what you're thinking. Yeah, and there was a deep dive. I'm right. going to show. I haven't done this long enough. I, I and so, what was the actual reaction? No, that was really funny because everybody loved them. And I was like so amazed that everybody like came to me. You should keep doing this, and they were amazing. And I, I suppose it was, it's that that's something that Americans always say. But I didn't feel no, that. I, I actually did feel that they had a genuine reaction, and that's why I was so happy that I decided to show them. Uh -huh. So I'm glad I did it. And um, you actually did something which we haven't done. Uh, so we may steal part of it from you, uh, or borrow it, and yeah. that is. Uh, making our exhibitions from our artists more like a night at the theater. Okay. And, uh, and really uh, revealing works uh, and talking about each one. Yeah. I mean, it's yours. We will always give you the credit for it. You have to put it there always. <laughs> but it's actually, it was very smart. And, uh, and it really, uh, not un in an uncomfortable way, it, uh, it contained the visitors in a way, it wasn't too long, uh, and it contained them so that they could receive what you had wanted to impart to them about each work. Yeah, I'm really glad you said that because the reason why I did it is like normally when people come to the openings, there's normally people and they just talk to the to talk to each other, and then the, the and works... They don't are, work at, look at the work. Exactly, they're just on the walls and people don't even look at them. And so I always, I've done this a few times in Finland with my exhibition, so always the new work, I want to unveil it. And somebody just, did, somebody just said that it's becoming my kind of trademark, but why not? I mean, I, because I, I mean, I'm sure everybody would not want to do it. Some people are more shy and they don't want to talk about the work. But the reason why I did it is like, because I want to give them at least, because we bombard it with images everywhere, Instagram, Facebook, we just get images like hundreds a day. So I wanted to, because I work, you know, I love my models and I appreciate their input. And also, obviously, it's very important to me, these works. So yes. I wanted to give them at least a few seconds in the limelight. Yes. That now this world sees them for the first time. And it's kind of exciting. I was trying to make it that nobody had seen them before, but obviously that's impossible because a person printed them and then we put them on the walls. And then somebody was sneaking into the lounge and said, like, oh, I came with a torchlight. And I was like, no, you shouldn't do that. Oh, that's Half a... jokingly said that, but I was so yes. serious as well. Like, yes. yes, because I also, with the, with the you guys in the house, I wanted to give it, like, a sort of, just to make it special. It's like a performance. But, yeah, so I probably would keep doing it. Yes. And use it too in the house. No, yeah, I think it's, people it that was brilliant. Are, yeah, good. So, um... You work in color and uh, black and white. Um, your black and white is is it digital also? Um, yes. Sometimes I obviously started shooting with film, so I have a background in very old school film photography. That's how everything started with my photography, and I think the aesthetics is still the same, even if I use digital cameras. I sometimes use analog lenses for my mm -hmm. film cameras with an adapter, so it doesn't really. It's it. They still look the same in a way. So I'm not like a. I don't think technically there's that much difference. So I obviously with digital you process them and you just make them black and white for printing. But obviously with digital tools there's more possibilities to kind of work with work them, make them look better, which. I mean, I'm always up for new tools because why? Why should you be stuck with analog photography? Well, I was quite uh, taken with uh, your approach and your execution of, of your digital color work, in that, uh, and you uh, 
do sometimes merge uh, two uh, images together. Yes. Like a background image. And yeah, I've done that quite a bit, and that's probably what I've been doing mostly with my work, like manipulating the images and using green composites. And this time, I have some images here that are actually composites on done with with computer, but not not in a way that they wouldn't look real. So they they. So look... what is your intent? I mean, can you generalize and in, in, in say that when you're shooting a model, you have a certain intention to uh, to uh, get from it? Uh, well, for this series, I kind of kept changing my mind because I had just uh, published a book, Intimate Light, which is there. This one? Yeah. Yes. Yeah. And that's really um, the first time that I'm showing uh, like authentic photography that hasn't been altered, like very old school approach to it, that there's no digital manipulation, there's no these kind of, because I've done these all these kind of fictional superstores setting body parts and like m stores with performers setting different types of men and you can buy like different um, accessories to sort of um, uh, modify, what's their chest hair, all this kind of sort of ironic work that's yes. more of like with graphics and fictional products. So this is like very old school. So I wanted to have a book that's authentic, so it's not manipulated. and. That's the approach that I kind of decided to have with this new series as well. Because this feedback for the book has been so great. Because I always thought, like, is it worth, is it like, is it, is it interesting to do like this old school photography? I always question these things, maybe too much. Like, is it really like, because I'm known to do these kind of manipulations and these kind of crazy performances, and would it be interesting to do it like really old school way? And then when the, this book, book was published the feedback in Finland was so amazing yes. everybody loved it and I was thinking like okay this is actually it is interesting just to work with the model and just with the light and the form and I began to think that obviously that's the most the simplest form of photography that's the way the classic the classic one and then uh, then when I started doing this new series I kind of thought like what's my approach and I, like I said, I kept changing my mind. Uh, first, I thought I'll continue this, like um, this black and white portrait style. And then I started finding these flowers, these kind of um, beautiful flowers that are around LA. Like there's dry cactuses, mm -hmm. these kind of plants that look amazing. I went to a lot of cemeteries and found beautiful installments of those. And then I suddenly I had a, a picture, a beautiful picture of a flower, a set of flowers, next to, actually, I don't know if you can see it in this frame, but one of the first shots from Jorge, and also with Matt. So I started, there's actually a version of those pictures with flowers in them. And then I thought, okay, this is exciting, I'm actually doing this kind of, because I didn't have my proper computer big screens here, so I just used my very small laptop, so I knew it was limiting limited what I could do in terms of uh, computer work. So I was just, I started doing these very simple composites just having two, two uh, photos on top of each other as layers. And then suddenly I thought, okay, it's gonna be all this, it's gonna be these flowers combined with the guys. And I got really excited about it. And then I had a whole series of that. There's two only, sh only two shown here, but I have like a whole series of, of those as well okay. that, that exist. And then I changed my mind again. I thought, oh, it's actually stronger if I just do this. We just play with the We have lots of concrete here. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. So, and then I was kind of toying the idea whether I should do the black and white, the, the classic portraits or the digital ones. And then I thought, oh, I show both. A little bit of both. Uh -huh. And only those two are ones that are ready. So I didn't really want to show anything that's like work in process. So I think eventually if I put this together as a book or a bigger series, I might for the first time have both types of images in it, like classic um, black and white. Yes. And then there's slightly manipulated color images. They might work together. But like I said, it's a work in process. So uh, you're going back to Finland. Yes. And uh, so, 
What have you gotten out of being here? Well, I, I, in my opinion, I got a really great new series. Um, I've met amazing people, including you. It's been so great meeting so many people that are like-minded and are passionate about art. And I mean, I can't probably even say now, like, really quickly that what what I it's been I think it's been quite life life changing in three months although it's a short period but it feels like I've changed as a person I didn't think that I would change this much at this age but I feel I'm sort of more confident and kind of I don't know I've had so much fun you fit I mean uh, right after arriving you were participating in dinners and uh and using uh, lunchtime with the staff uh, to uh, to interact and, and converse and, and uh, so I mean it seemed like your comfort level was uh, happened very easily. Yeah, I'm kind of almost surprised about that in a way because we Finns are known to be quite reserved, yes. and introspective, and like not really. But I suppose it's like because everybody's so friendly here and welcoming. And Why I, do you think that is? I don't, I don't know. even know. I don't know, but it feels like home. Yeah. So it didn't feel like you're like, you know, weird area that you feel uncomfortable. I feel that way about LA. I mean, about uh, the Tom House because it's 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 got such a concentrated uh, amount of uh, people that are friendly or confident themselves yeah so it just is uh, uh, abundant but I f sort of feel like it extends beyond the hedges here mm -hmm. and that uh, uh, and you mentioned to me about LA and that people were willing to assist yeah everybody I mean I haven't met an unfri unfriendly person in LA I can't think of so I'm quite surprised about I wasn't didn't have expectations. we're supposed to be superficial I haven't noticed that, to be honest. Maybe because, I mean, this house that is like a art house. Yes. So it collects people that yes. are like-minded yes. and like not superficial. So I probably, this is sort of a bit of a bubble, I suppose, in terms of LA. I haven't seen all aspects of it, but it's a lovely bubble. It's like, like really kind of a really nice environment. And what I really think it's important that coming here and doing what I do, obviously I don't have to justify anything. I don't have to explain myself yes. why I do this. I'm automatically accepted. So that's, I think that's the main thing because with the other residences, it's always like, because I feel that I'm kind of, because I always work from my own personal perspective and you always kind of, I don't really understand still that it's kind of my minority area that I'm talking about or like well, to me it isn't it's just being a human being yes so that's why it's always surprising and looking looking after it's always I feel like being the odd one out you know where he's that guy who's out of the box and he's doing these things that nobody else is doing I'm talking about Helsinki yeah, yeah. Uh, and I feel it's completely unfair because it's like you, you get big picture hole uh, to put you get put into this box of being this gay artist who, who does gay things and a lot of people think that that's the only thing, that that's the only value. It's not true at all. And only valuable to others, gays. Exactly, which is completely right. not true. I had a good example when I was, we had a, like events at the, in Helsinki and we had like a book evening with, we're showing new books and I had this book up and there were like maybe 10 other books and I mean this is a beautifully printed book. And I had my desk, and there were a lot of, you know, males coming, and they looked at the cover and just looked away, and didn't come to my desk, because I find that so infuriating. Because it's not, it's a beautiful book that's beautifully printed, and the photography is beautiful. And if they are friends, with, if they are into photography, I'm sure they'd be dying to see it. But then, if there's a half-naked man on the cover, they think they can't look at it in the public because people think they're gay. So the thing is, isn't it sad for them? It's completely sad for yeah. them. But I'm also furious. Like I always went to them, like, why are you looking at all the other books but not mine? Do you have a problem with yourself? <laughs> exactly. Yeah, but what can you do? Because I don't feel that 
at all. I, I, can, I just feel that my art is, should be there in the same place with any other contemporary art. And it's not like some people are interested in photographing birds and doing landscapes and I'm doing this, but I'm still getting pigeonholed to be this weird person. Well, you'll have to uh, step up and, uh, and not allow it. Yeah, exactly. This yeah. is not all right. <laughs> so no, but that's what I mean, that it's yes. been so great here that it's so supported, obviously, and supported the environment. And that's also, so I feel so relaxed in here. You can do something of service for us, and that is when you go back to Finland, um, um, let people know about uh, what this foundation is. I will, definitely. And that yeah. If they uh, so many have felt uh, that uh, Tom was not uh, what was he thinking when he actually set up his foundation in America? Yeah, and uh, but he knew, he knew that uh, uh, this was a place where people do things exactly, and uh, and he uh, and he wanted an archive. Yeah, yeah, and that's that's amazing archive you have here. Yes, yeah, and it is you know. As soon as we had the day when we actually decided to open it up to other artists, uh, it became the family, you know, a mm -hmm. family of, of artists. Yeah. Yeah. I can feel that. Yeah. So I want to ask you, uh, 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 do you have any, any things that you would like to say to the viewers? Uh, you know, you, this is a platform for you uh, as far as... Uh, them, how can they find you? Find me? Yes. Oh. You can find me on Instagram with my name. Uh, you can follow me. You can join my um, mailing list on my website. If you go to my website, www.teropua.com And on the website, you, you can obviously, there's, there's the whole archive of all the works I've done as an artist from 1996. That's the first project I did. So I, I find it, I know, I, I'm not sure whether it's unusual, but I really want to keep my work archived in a very sort of um, organized way. So if you go to my website, you see, you can go to timeline and see all the works that I've done in particular years. Well, we, as I told you, we were quite surprised when we took a look at your first book. Uh, that you did because it was completely uh, in a different thing. Oh yes, yeah, yeah, and I kind of um, y yeah. The first book is is completely different. It's it's just like um, there's like four people writing about my work, and also I suppose that if somebody needed to get um, sort of quick idea of everything I do, they would look at that book because it has variation of. Of, of this photography as well, yes. but there's also like these installations that are interactive, where I've hired act actors to work as whatever, say it's people or um, consultants, and then also there's introduction to my short films. I think the book came out when I had just started making short films, so there's only one short film that's written about in that book. But it's good to have both, obviously, and this, hopefully, and it should not, it won't be my last book, so I hopefully get this new series. Maybe as a, a smaller book, but I, I'm really into this publishing now. Yes. Yes. Yeah. Yeah. It's a great uh, sort of statement uh, form to. Uh, it is to uh, validate where you have been. Exactly. Yeah. Yes. Yeah, I love books. I mean, just like I can't believe that it took ten years to do this other book. So it won't be ten years before the no. next comes out. So, and maybe books can be shorter? Oh, yeah, yeah. Not necessarily, it doesn't have to be like like this thick one, or it could be like sh smaller in size. And that's why, it means, that's why it's been so great to see the, all the books you have yes. in the archive. So I've been looking at like different kind of approaches, different materials, different kind of binding methods, and different types of covers. So I've taken a lot of notes and pictures, and yeah. So, um, is there anything else that you would like to have? Is this this is a little document of you at the time period uh, capsule? Um, any words of wisdom? No. Um, well, I, I 
probably if I had more, more time to think I would probably have wiser words but I think for for I could obviously I want to thank everybody at the foundation I want to thank every people who really made my stay so pleasurable and I hope we keep in touch it's been so great um, but what I would like to say generally about and to artists is like they should really kind of if they are passionate about something they should not like divert from that trying to do something that's like uh, popular or they should stick to their guns and do the things they want to do do the things they believe in and are passionate about I, I'm talking about themes like I think great art only comes from personal experience and when you're passionate about something and you put it out and don't censor yourself and try, don't try to jump on any new bandwagon that should I be doing that to get a claim should I do that because I've seen people that they that have who've done that if you know what I mean yes so they don't really form their own identity yes. as an artist because they try to do different things and then actually that means that to me that means that you don't have anything to say if you just try to find a thing that would make you like a credible artist or well it is interesting that you're Finnish and that our head guy was Finnish yes and what he did throughout his life is he stuck to his guns he didn't compromise he continued to uh, to uh, do his his men uh, having uh, sex in a happy positive way and uh, and sometimes he would criticize himself as far as being sort of too much in a, a the same yeah but in history uh, it is now uh, that he uh, he was one that uh, created change. Exactly. Because he stuck to his gun. Exactly. He did exactly that. And uh, that's amazing. Yeah. So there's a, a little bit of him in you and uh, and a little bit of Finns in all of us now. Yeah. yeah. I, I have to say this. I was so honored like two or three years ago when I was having an exhibition in Finland during the Pride Week. I was showing this um, called Candy Boy Box, this kind of um, digital, beautiful images of guys mixed with candy. And then somebody came to the gallery and he said to me, I'm so glad that now we have another. Really? Yeah, and I was, I mean, yes. besides Tom, I was yes. like, well, actually, he, did he say that? That's amazing that he was kind of putting us, uh, us to the same kind of... Well, yeah. you know what you have now is that you have been here and uh, um, take advantage of uh, of the relationship and uh, use it as a so one of the things that I have come to realize is that each of you uh, is now an official ambassador for the foundation that uh, you'll go back out into the world and it is our plan and our hope and our uh, that you will in fact uh, Represent us and, course, yes. and, uh, and let people have a much more understanding of what, what goes on here. Yes, I would definitely do that yeah. and people will be curious to hear. And uh, is it tonight that we actually get to experience your meal? <laughs> I hope so. I have a shoot to do, yes, but I will do... Uh, You've been very tardy in, in sharing a meal that is from your uh, homeland. Yeah, because there isn't any, uh, there aren't that many foods that are totally Finnish. So I'm gonna do some quiche, uh -huh. which is, I guess, traditional Finnish. Thing. Yeah. Yes. Well, and you've actually, uh, you're going to be hosting a Finnish uh, reception here uh, tomorrow. Am I hosting it? Well, I mean, you're Finnish and uh, you're here. So I, I would say that you're going to be one of those. Oh, I didn't know this. <laughs> okay, yeah, I'll do my best. Yes. Well, and uh, I've made sure that um, that we'll have an index. Oh, yeah, yeah, yeah good. Perfect, yes. Well, so thank you. Thank you so much. And, uh, and I look forward to seeing you back in Finland. Yeah, yeah, when you come. Yeah. Very soon. Me too. All right.